on the agenda, General Tribal Council. Petitioner Frank Cornelius, Business Committee to the Direct Business Committee to dissolve Oneida Seven Generations Corporation based on law office March 2013 findings that GP's that Oneida Seven Generations Corporation charter identifies that the shareholder, i.e. the tribe, as represented by the business committee, can dissolve the corporation. The last action was motion by David Jordan to acknowledge receipt of the of the petition and to forward to the responsible parties for appropriate analysis and an update to be, be provided in 30 days, seconded by Patty Heft. Motion Mr. carried. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this item is back on our agenda. Uh, we have in front of us the analysis from the Legislative Reference Office and the LOC. We are waiting uh, on the analysis for the fiscal piece and the legal piece. Uh, so today would be uh, an opportunity for us to hear from the CFO and Chief Counsel on the status of their efforts to complete the analysis. The analysis for this petition is um, in line behind uh, the uh, Genscow petitions and finalizing, I'm waiting for information to be received for the Doc Steer petition. Uh, so there's uh, two other items in front of that uh, prior to getting concluded. I am gathering the information needed in order to uh, uh, prepare the analysis so that when I have time to review and get it done, it'll get done quickly. Larry? As mentioned in the prior uh, business committee meeting, I believe two weeks ago, upon receipt of the legal analysis, then we can forthwith begin the process of the fiscal analysis. Uh, Frank? I don't think there's anywhere in the, um, my petition we requested a legal analysis. So now 80 days has passed and it, uh, as of today, we'll have 90 days, the 8th of next month. Um, if we have the general tribal as I request it, and at that general tribal, if they s feel we have a legal analysis or a fiscal analysis or a legal opinion, the general tribal could say they want that. In the meantime, the general tribal wants a meeting. No word it is ask it in the thing the Constitution gives us the legal analysis. It says the chairman or the business committee come out can call a meeting. What happens at the meeting may require a legal opinion, but for right now, we said we want a meeting, <sighs> and I think we should schedule a meeting because to, to delay is only to delaying justice. If we need another petition, go out there now that you've all agreed the business committee the chairman can call one or the petitioners, I can go out there and give you 50 more signatures and demand that we have one within 10 days or 30 days. Let's let the general tribal start running this show. You were elected again to represent us, not to stall. And I think this is a stalling tactic. If we can't get it done in 30 days, and the legal an and the financial analysis man, Mr. Barton, told us he was going to do it in 30 days, now he's standing here telling me he's waiting for a legal opinion, then he can start to do it. That's only going to delay it. We're not waiting for delay. We'd like to have the business committee schedule a meeting, notify the general driver when we can get together. Larry. For the record, we never gave a deadline of 30 days to oblige delivery of the fi financial analyses. You're correct. You asked for 30 days when you stood right down this aisle, and the business committee gave you 30 days to come up with the analysis. Now you're saying you're going to wait for the legal opinion. You know this is coming. If you can't do it, then let's get somebody else who can do it. Larry. For the, for, I guess, point of clarification, we did also make the comment that upon receipt of the legal analysis, then we can move forward on the fiscal analysis. I stated that clearly at the original occasion the issue came up, I believe about, as you suggest, uh, I don't know the exact meeting date, but I believe it was late July. You work for the business committee and the general tribal, not for the legal people. <coughs> yeah. If they're telling you to go do a legal anal or a fiscal analysis, do the fiscal analysis. That's a separate part. 
It has nothing to do with the legal part of this thing. You have auditors can come in and, and do an audit. They don't need a legal opinion. Look over what you got. Look what they owe and how much we owe and what we're making, what we're taking in. That's all we want to hear from you. I, uh, I'd like to say something now. I think we need to get this issue done. And done. I think it needs to come before General Tribal Council. Uh, this issue is hurting our community. Our, we've had threats made against our against the people who are petitioning for this. I want that to end. I want everything to end. I want this to be de decided upon. This is issue is, is leading to dysfunction within our community, and and I think we need to do something. Uh, when when an elder uh, is being threatened, two elders, and another one. Uh, when a tribal woman is being threatened, uh, I, I think we need to act and act. Let's get this done with. Let's bring it to General Tribal Council. Let the General Tribal Council make a decision, and uh, maybe we can start working on uh, creating some community again, like Chaz often mentions. Uh, I would like to see this issue come before GTC in July. Uh, in July. <laughs> July of next year, no, <laughs> uh, August 12th, October 12th. I think we have a, a meeting scheduled for October 12th, and I'm hoping that we can put it on there, get this issue done with. If we expedite our analysis, if we ex expedite everything, we can get this done in two weeks, All the, everything that's needed. So the legal analysis, the financial analysis, it shouldn't take a long, long time. Board, we discussed this earlier. Uh, boards, corporations, all of those things are adjusted, uh, enhanced, done away with every day. And it shouldn't take us six months. January is too far, just too, too far. And our community shouldn't have to, have to go through this any longer. Uh, October 12th, I'm hoping that somebody will make that motion, that we can have that meeting on the 12th. We can get all the analysis ready in the next two weeks. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to clarify that on July 24th, the motion was made to receive the petition and forward to the responsible parties for appropriate analysis and an update be provided in 30 days. That was the action the business committee took on July 24th. We are 30 days out and we are getting the update today and we are doing what we said we would do. I would like to see this issue be addressed as well because I'm really tired of the defamatory remarks and the slandering of tribal officials, or tribal employees, corporate employees. There's a lot of slandering going on around this whole issue and it's totally inappropriate and unacceptable. You know, I think if people want information and they want to be informed when they make a decision, then provide us that opportunity to get the appropriate information in front of people. So, you know, I think we're trying to do the appropriate due diligence to address this matter, and it, it's not something that can be done in short order, unfortunately. But I don't appreciate the, the sarcastic remarks that are being put out into the um, internet newsletters on this item. Um, Dodge. One comment. Um, so you would you would agree that uh, that calling individuals terrorists without any type of adjudication would be a perfect example of slandering being committed by our elected officials. Um, and secondly, why was the why was Frank's petition put behind the Doc Sater petition and the Genskow petition in terms of the legal analysis? Greg. I think you're referring to my comments of identifying Jason Fitzgerald as a terrorist. Yes. Um, and I still, I, I stand by that. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, so let's maintain order, please. Whenever an individual from a said group enters a governmental group and takes information from that and exposes it into a public forum, what would you term it? That's my actions. That's my actions. I'm exposing the behavior of our elected officials and other individuals 
I am not the actors. I am not the people who are doing things. I'm merely showing a mirror of the behavior. Everyone else provides the actions. If you don't like what you see, change your behavior. Simple as that. Again, why were the, what, uh, Frank's petition was submitted <coughs> on July 9th. It was heard on the business committee on July 24th. Um, the docs data petition didn't even get filed until the second, it wasn't even certified till after that. Why wasn't Frank's prioritized on the law office? Uh, she's referring to the removal petition filed by Brian Dockstader, which has specific um, law required timelines, but he also submitted another petition in May. On May 20th, Carol Liggins and Brian Dockstader each submitted a petition. Uh, Carol's was about the Milwaukee polling site and Brian's was about the SEAT's long-term facility. And I think that's what Chief Counsel might, might have been referring to, the work on that petition. That, that I'm not uh, providing any legal analysis in regards to the second petition submitted by uh, Mr. Dockstader. This is the SEAT's facility petition. Mm -hmm. if and, and what I'm asking is we yeah. have petitions received in May and then we have Franks in July. I'm asking for those to go, all go on the October 12th meeting. I, I, certainly, I, we can move some of these things up. I prioritize the work product mm -hmm. um, in regards to general tribal mm -hmm. council petitions I, as best I can in chronological order and try to get them done. There may be some shuffling that occurs as a result of uh, gathering information. I'm currently waiting on additional information in regards to the uh, Doc Stater Seox petition. Um, so it, they may not come out in that order. Uh, some require a significant amount of uh, legal analysis um, or uh, research to be conducted. Uh, some of them have multiple actions within it. Uh, for example, Madeline Genskow's position actually has two resolutions incorporated within it. At the point of order, we're not worried about those petitions. I'm worried about mine. Yeah, we just have which requires have additional action that. to take place. So if the business committee desires petitions to be brought forward in a specific order, I'm happy to reorganize the priority. Otherwise, I try to take them mm -hmm. in chronological order. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to interject here again. If we could possibly get that on October, I have no problem with that. If you need another petition demanding that when we'll have it, we can do that according to the Constitution. It, again, at the meeting, at the GTC meeting, if the general tribal wants the fiscal analysis, we can postpone it. If the general tribal wants a legal opinion, which we don't require right now, the Constitution says the chairman or 50 voters can call for the meeting. We don't need a legal opinion. So I'm asking you, begging you, let's continue on and help the people. Let's schedule this. It's 80 days have passed since I submitted this. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm asking that, you know, that's why I asked about the, the chairman at calling a meeting because I, I fully intend for, to promote the end of this, uh, what this community is going through. Uh, I see no, I, see, I think it's a shame that our tribal elders and our, our tribal women are being, uh, are being uh, threatened physically. Uh, we need to come to an end with this. We need to make a decision, bring it to GTC, and if we can't do it October 12th, I would like, uh, I would like to do it in October and, uh, and get this done with. Mr. Chairman, um, two things to ask then today is to find out from Chief Financial Officer and Chief Counsel when uh, the analysis pieces can be completed. Um, I'm not sure how much time. I think if we make an action today, we can help prioritize workload and, and um, set a date for this petition. Uh, we usually don't set a date until we have all of the analysis pieces in hand. I did set up a work meeting for us to talk about the schedule of GTC meetings through uh, February of next year. Uh, and I am proposing um, that we talk about putting the um, Frank Cornelius petition on the October 12th agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I think once we have the work meeting and talk about that, um, maybe we could, you could call a special BC meeting then to, so that we could 
take action on setting the dates for each of these items. Mm -hmm. That might be a way to Thank uh, you. move forward and resolve this. Thank you. There was a legal opinion issued by Ms. H Attorney Hollis already. Um, I have a copy of it where she said if the Seven Gens does anything that does it disagree that GTC can take an action of dissolving them. I have that le legal opinion already it has not changed. It's in writing. Mm -hmm. So we don't need another one. Is that <coughs> this would be in reference to the legal opinion that was issued regarding the um, anti-incinerator petition f at the May 5th meeting. Um, Joanne House already issued the legal opinion that GT GTC can direct the BC to dissolve the corporation. End of story. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Patty. I think that the committee has to really handle um, very carefully the other activities that the Oneida Seven Generations Corporation manages regarding the commercial properties that they have. Um, in their report earlier today, they, list, they reported that they have 15 different um, commercial sites that they manage. And I forget the total amount of business or the total amount of um, money or value for those businesses. I think they reported 60 those million. Those will always be there, and if the general tribe wants to deal with that, they can, but let's yeah. have the meeting as you suggested on the 12th. Right, yeah, we just, I think that's the concern is how do we balance that if if the action is taken at GTC. Beverly, did you have your hand up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> A good example would be the, um, for example, Seven Gens owns the gaming warehouse. Um, the gaming operations pay Seven Generations lease fees. Um, for but in essence, the gaming maintenance department takes care of all of the maintenance and custodial needs of the building. Why is Seven Generations even in the middle? It's on casino property. Casino people handle it. There's no need to even have Seven Generations involved in that transaction money would then go directly to the tribe's general fund where it b should go. And that would be one example of how easy it is mm -hmm. in terms of the property management. And similarly for the other tribally used buildings that seven generations supposedly owns. It does not own any land, the tribe owns all the land. <coughs> um, and gi given the fact that the land management division has had its uh, um, duties substantially reduced by the fact that there's no new land acquisitions that would f that gives them a lot of free time to handle whatever property management there may be for the possibly two or three facilities that are being leased to other entities other than the tribe so in terms of that financial analysis that's pretty simple and the proper procedure to dissolve seven gen is set forth in their own charter on the second page down there it tells who will start paying back first and how you'll handle these things. So it's already laid out. You don't have to analyze it. If you can read, it's in the charter. Larry and then Brandon. Uh, respectfully, I appreciate Ms. Dodge's um, description on the, at least the, the casino warehouse, but please understand there are credit agreements behind many of the assets that 7Gen currently owns. As the tr uh, Secretary pointed out, there's something north of 60 million in assets to unwind the credit agreements, the leases, the assignability, these are all questions that have to be assessed. And then furthermore, what is the cost factor for the dissolution? That's ultimately where we want to get. And uh, for that matter, as I mentioned in the previous meeting and with the work meeting, we would feel comfortable having a third party CPA firm conduct that assessment upon receipt of the legal, uh, the uh, legal assessment. So all, that all way there's a clear understanding of the liability from an objective third party if we are to unwind not only the lease agreements but the commitments we have with those LLCs. So it's perceptibly simple but um, I want to make it clear that there's complexity in those agreements that have a fiscal and a defined dollar impact and we all need to understand what that is before we make a good decision as a matter of policy. So I just want to point that out. And, and the point's well taken. Um, at that time, it was decided that 7Gen, the parties involved with construction of the warehouse, would take leverage with the third party and then lease back so as to not obligate the tribe's operational budget at that time. I was not party to, to the decision, but um, 
in many instances, the real estate projects that 7Gen did pursue with the intent of adding value were executed at that time. But again, fundamentally, the assignability of those leases surrounding the issue of sovereign immunity and the credit agreements need to be clearly understood by the membership before we take action. So that's where we want to go. Furthermore, I think the time compression uh, for the 12th is problematic because we need a minimum of arguably 35, 40 days, 45 days to get in, uh, have the third party meet with, with the Seven Gen's board, and of course Mr. Bruce King to really drill down and assess a range of dollars to unwind uh, that operation. So, and, and we've openly expressed that at previous meetings. So, thank you. And uh, going with that, we understand that those things happen, and we understand that also that contracts are broken and they're dealt with. That's when we get legal opinions and they go into court. And we understand if you look at from not your side, look at the other side, look at the tribal side. The auditors has told us in their last report, which Tina has and we all have copies of, we owe that four million now, six hundred sixty-eight thousand this year, and that if they keep it up because they're not paying the bills and extending it out and renegotiating, only pay interest. In seven years, we'll owe ten million dollars. It'll be like nature's way; we'll go drop behind. That's in the auditor's report, and I have a copy of that as well. If you want to see that, so look at it from the tribal angle. We should support the tribe and save the ten million dollars. Maybe we're going to lose f three million, four million, like we did in nature's way, um, settling these things. But ultimately, it's going to be settled. Right now, as we talk, the people are trying to negotiate and stretch out the loans. They're not paying them back. Even the 750000 I don't know how much came back in right now, that they took a loan out. I don't know what the loan document is. I've never seen it. It's secret. But we have, we have to do something. Those things can be dealt with. That's when we need legal opinions. But the general tribal by constitution says we can have a general tribal council meeting. If they want to wait, I'm for them. We'll wait. But the General Tribal Council needs to get together, and I'm going along with what you suggested on the 12th. Thank you. Brandon, and then Joanne. Uh, first question is, uh, what, what is the, the action we need to take? Is just we need to accept uh, mm -hmm. the operating, legislative op operating committee's um, analysis? Patty, is that the only thing we need right, to really today do? Today we need to just accept it, and then we need to define uh, when we want the analysis the other two analysis done. So when we did make the motion a month ago, uh, we understood this was going to be a very complex um, item, and we did set 30 days um, as a date when we wanted the analysis back, but we said if you can't get it done, we expect to get a report on how much more time you're going to need in order to complete it, and, and we heard that today. So they need more time. I don't know how much more time, but I think if the committee when we have our work meeting, we can sit down with them and help decide. Okay, and then, and then uh, the reason why we want the analysis and, and the, the opinion is because uh, General Tribal Council always wants the information in front of them to make an informed decision. So essentially what, we're trying, what you're trying to say is that we just want to have a meeting to discuss this, and that would make two meetings to bring more information forward. Right now we're trying to do all the, the, the grunt work to provide all the information to to the General Tribal Council to make an informed decision and all the impacts and implications of something of a dissolution of, of agreements, uh, cre credit agreements, and uh, partnerships that that Seven Gens has, like Bellin. And those things like that, you know, they have a lot of impacts. And General Tribal Council has time and time again asked for the information before they receive it on the time when they want to make a decision. And so that's set precedent, so that's what we're trying to do here. And, 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 and I believe we're trying to do it in a timely fashion because the longer we wait, the more damage our creditability has on the tribe for all assets and entities of the tribe. So we're trying to do it in an expeditious manner. Patty. I, I agree, but the general tribal has a lot of the information now. Who's in the debate? And I think the general tribal can make a decision. I do think that um, if we move this item to an early to the October 12th um, meeting date, um, and if GTC were to decide that they want it to dissolve uh, the Seven Gens Corporation, that 
there'd be a lot that they would recognize that there would be a lot of work that would have to be done in order to carry that out. I don't think they would expect that. Well, we would have to advise them that it could not happen immediately, that there would, be ha there would have to be steps taken in order to achieve that. Uh, I think we do need clarity, though, um, whether the intent of the petition is to dissolve the entire corporation or just to prevent them from engaging in this waste to energy project that that has caused a lot of this dissatisfaction. Um, because we're going about the analysis period assuming the worst that they want the entire, that the, that we will want the entire corporation dissolved. Um, which we're hearing, well, right, and we've talked, part of the problem with petitions is that we don't meet with petitioners in order to clarify the question. Um, because the petitioner doesn't really um, know either the details of some of the questions that they present to us. So today is a good opportunity, I think, um, and a healthy, a healthy one in order to get some clarification on the question. Joanne. But I th think to say that it is within the Articles of Incorporation of Seven Gens that they can be dissolved is uh, fairly simplistic. It's true. There's nothing else that can be said about that. The difficulty is, is that the General Tribal Council when it adopted the 10-day notice policy, it's demanded information. That body said, we need to be informed. I can't write a legal opinion in the amount of time that's being requested that would cover all of the information, and you're not going to get that legal opinion. Um, you wait a significant amount of time for that. You will get a legal opinion that attempts to cover all of the consequences that could occur um, and provide alternative solutions to the Joe and Tribal Council so that if they desired that seven gens be dissolved, that we could do that in an orderly fashion. Um, I certainly, in this case, had the easier of the two jobs. Uh, my sympathy goes to Larry because there is a financial impact. To say that we break contracts um, on a regular basis and we go to litigation is m certainly not a true statement. Um, we honor our contracts. We're committed to honoring our contracts, both as a good government and we expect all our corporations to do the same. So for all of these contracts that are in place that Chevin Jens is engaged in, and not just the land leases with the tribe, not just the partnership agreements with the companies, not just the loans with the banks to cover the uh, uh, construction and the mortgages, uh, but all of the other contracts that they have in place. Um, that's something that we'll have to go through and find out, can they be transferred? Is there a cost to that? That's legal work, that's financial work to get that done. But really what is more important to look at, and is something that, that Larry is gonna struggle with, is the impact on the finances to the tribe. We have a bond out there that's fairly significant, has restrictions on it. Um, we have loans and other um, engagement agreements that we've entered into that um, basically require us to maintain certain debt ratios, certain income ratios, etc. The Seven Gens Corporations isn't tiny. I'm not selling a car. I'm trying to dissolve a huge multi-million dollar corporation. And while the tribe's budget is significantly bigger than Seven Gens, what we've done is complex on our side. And it requires a lot of work to determine whether or not simply dissolving Seven Gens will negatively impact the tribe and its ability to be able to carry forward with our obligations, the tribe's obligations we have in those credit agreements and those bond agreements. And to that extent, the financial impact is significantly greater than the legal impacts that we would bring forward. Uh, the Secretary has identified an alternative, uh, as well as Mr. Stevens, Council Member Stevens, that uh, the discussion could be had at the General Tribal Council meeting, um, where the General Tribal Council could decide that it's in the best interest of the tribe, um, that seven gens should be dissolved and direct the business committee to do so in a timely manner. Um, the legal opinion for that type of action would be significantly different than if the decision at the General Tribal Council is to dissolve seven gens. Um, and uh, I haven't even 
started to get into the analysis that would be necessary to do that. So the legal analysis that the business committee will receive will be as thorough as we can make it in the time allotted. Uh, if you decide that you place it on the October 12th agenda, I think the printing deadline is sometime in mid-late um, September. Mm -hmm. Um, that gives me a very shallow time period in which to get something done so that Larry uh, can have the information and move forward. Um, like I said, we're not selling a car. If you ask me, can we sell this car, my answer is yes. But then, okay, I've got a loan on the car that I've got to pay off, and I've got to make sure that we do all the other things necessary, including potentially transferring the license plate out of the tribe into the state. The answer is simple, yes, we can dissolve seven gens process is complex and I don't think that the General Tribal Council and this at this point would be my personal opinion I don't think that the General Tribal Council will accept this simple answer I think the General Tribal Council would expect additional information in which to make an informed decision to direct the business committee to carry out its directives and to that extent I will try to put a legal opinion together that covers those issues um, but right now it's prioritized appropriately chronologically. If you make a decision on a specific date it's gonna go to the General Tribal Council, I will reprioritize that legal opinion and it will get done uh, within the time of, uh, allotted. Uh, obviously, uh, stronger or weaker depending on how much time is available. Thank you. Larry, uh, you mentioned 45 days. Could you? Uh, we explain that well <coughs> we need to solicit a third party of course to execute the uh, uh, assessment for sake of objectivity we owe that duty to the membership uh, number one number two uh, preparation of the RFP is likely about arguably two weeks the solicitation uh, about two weeks the assessment back a couple of weeks selection and then the charge to move forward sometime thereafter and again this is not that we dismiss the petitioner <laughs> whatsoever it's again the careful due diligence relative to not only the credit commitments and the leases within the, the LLC's uh, it, it, I, I mentioned it to you folks as I'll mention it right here public it is troubling from the standpoint of exposure and as council mentions it's not only self-contained in 7 gen this is unprecedented in the fact that it will affect the other corporations, Bay Bank, OTI, OAHC, OGE, and, and all the corporations. So um, in a perfect world, we would self-contain that to 7Gen. That's not how the credit world works. This is the tribe. It is a subcorporation, and that credit, if you will, profile is carried through. So there's no distinction from the banking community uh, relative to one corporation that we're proposing to dissolve. So that's a careful, I think, assessment that we owe the duty to convey to the membership, and then it's their obligatory responsibility to do the right thing. But because, again, the complexity, the scale, the number of LLCs, this is not a simple process, this is not an easy process, and we would rely on third-party expertise to really perform the fiscal and fiduciary duty to provide uh, effective, effective um, information to the membership. So yes, we do need time, um, as council mentioned, really to provide, again, the, the framework of the fiscal analysis, we need the legal opinion first. And, and we've mentioned that openly, we've mentioned that publicly as we you know, mentioned it here. here to, no one's dragging the feet. Uh, at least at finance, we want to get this resolved as quickly as possible, because again, our our, our uh, protecting the tribe's creditworthiness is, is paramount uh, to the importance that we uh, that we all share in. So that responsibility we take seriously. So you, we need time. Again, this is not s this is a very complicated proposition that's going to be brought before the membership. So, thank you. Two. So in the meantime, what's stopping seven generations from creating additional LLCs in order to maintain the illusion that it would be too complicated to dissolve? I'd just like to add two, two things. One is that this is the very reason we need to get a general tribal council. To mention what Mr. Barton said, 
there's a lot of complications. We're looking for things that's true. And I think that's why we need a general tribal council. Maybe at the general tribal council, they'll say, get a better analysis. Maybe they'll say, we don't want to dissolve them. It's too complicated. That's one thing, one direction. The other direction they may go, as Tina mentioned before, hey, we're the tribe. Nobody can see us, sue us. So therefore, well, we can break the contracts. We're protected. So we're not going to lose that much money. As w the ones we're obligated to, and we think we have to pay it, set forth in their dissolving document, we're going to pay it. We're going to pay it anyway, just like we did when we did Nature's Way. And contracts were made to be broken. They can be broken. And that's where you have the legal problems. That's when the attorney's going to earn their money, not before we have do anything and have a legal opinion, fight it out and discourage yourself and try to talk us out of it. I think have a general tribal council, see what they want, because the solicitor general from the Bureau of Indian Affairs, which I worked for eight years, has ruled that when the general tribal is in council in session, they make the law. That's a supreme law of the land. The business committee carries out. Legal opinions can come later. Brandon? Um, I, to, to clarify, I, don't, I didn't hear anyone up, up here suggest that we hide behind sovereignty, imu sovereign immunity um, based on uh, breaking contracts and not being able to get. Um, yeah, I, I, did not, I did not hear any of that. So I just wanted to clarify that. And um, that's a lot of some other tribes are getting in trouble by trying to do that. And, you know, that's not we're, like Larry said, where we honor our contracts. And I, I just want to make sure that you're stating uh, correctly what we're saying up here. And in terms of who is out to the extent, um, the last extant version of the bylaws in, in terms of the indemnification, if there is a, a CEO or a principal or a representative of the board and the corporation that makes a wrongful decision, um, that liability is not going to be held upon that the tribe. It's to be held upon the individual who made that decision. That's according to the last extant version of the bylaws that we, as a general tribal council, are aware of. The reason I, I was suge suggesting uh, the 12th was that I stated it. Uh, we, need, we, we need to resolve the negative discourse uh, that's happening, uh, especially towards when it comes to violence, I do not condone that, and it's shameful. Uh, it sounds like we cannot do the 12th and be res uh, legally and financially res responsible. The last time we discussed that, it was mid-January. I don't find that acceptable either. That's way too long. So I think we need to come to some kind of a, uh, understanding that we're going to not go with January, but October's too soon. It's just too soon. Uh, if we can come to some kind of uh, understanding that maybe mid late November or early December is more acceptable. It could be done talking, talking about the timelines here. I think we can do that. Mr. Chairman, uh, I I if I may, uh, <clears throat> I think what we need to do is ac accept the, uh, um, uh, the analysis from Attorney Mays. Uh, we, we, we do that today yet. We take this up in our work meeting tomorrow. I see where um, the Secretary has scheduled a work meeting for uh, tomorrow um, at some point. And we have the CFO, uh, we have uh, Chief Counsel there, and, and, you know, we still have further discussion on, 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 on what we do. You know, if we're in between October, if we're in between January, maybe something miraculous will happen where, uh, you know, we can do October. You know, it certainly doesn't look like it uh, because I believe GTC uh, is going to want the information um, uh, ahead of time. We, we all want to see resolve um, to this. Um, everyone sitting up here, everybody in the community, I know Lee and Frank, everybody, we all want to see resolve to this and we want to do it in the best way that we know how. We want to get this uh, uh, in front of General Tribal Council for a decision um, to, to act on. But I say all we, uh, what we, I don't want to say all we do, but what we do today um, is accept uh, Attorney Mays' uh, le legislative analysis and we have this discussion at the work meeting tomorrow because you've got some other days and times and dates and uh, months uh, um, uh, in in there. Is there a motion on the floor, Mr. Chairman? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, a move to uh, um, 
accept uh, the legislative uh, analysis on a petition regarding dissolving Oneida seven generations? Second. We have a motion by Paul Ninham, seconded by Patty Heft. Discussion? Any further discussion? Again, uh, uh, there's, there's an attempt here to bring it closer to the day. Uh, we discussed January. I, I, I think most of us find that that's too long, and we're going to try and bring it closer. But we do need the information. Call for the question. No, no games. Call for the question. Just um, one more comment. If since um, Chairman Madsen, going back to the slander issue, um, how would he clarify the fact that um, his assistant Chaz Wheelock has been banned from the Oneida Reservation in New York? We're not from uh, at Ray right. Halberter's behest. Therefore, it would there. be considered a terrorist as well. Leah, Leah, we're not going there. We're not going there. Uh, I invite council. Called. I invite the I, vice chair. I, hold on. Let's maintain order. The terrorist comments, calling people terrorists. Uh, that's wrong. That puts people in danger. There are no terrorists here that I know of. Point of order, Mr. Oh. Chairman. We shouldn't be discussing this. I, I, I agree. Uh, did we vote on the motion? Uh, could we? We're gonna we're vote. gonna vote now, and uh, we're gonna maintain uh, uh, civility here. Um, so the motion was to accept the legislative analysis. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna vote now. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. Abstain. One abstention. Motion carries. Chaz. We have a lot of work ahead of us, and if you really think the gen issue is, and you, and you brought it up, Chairman, I think it just, it's, it's worthy of a com comment. If you really think the decision at John Tribal Council about a petition on an issue is going to resolve some of our core problems, I think we're fooling ourselves and we're fooling each other. You mentioned the wellness of our community, and I think there's a lot of work to do with that. And I think we've got to look real hard at each other and ourselves to find out where we need to start. And I think you can, y you need to look at any part of our community and find that. Not only just up at vendors, but any place around. And there's a lot of work to be done. But people don't even say hello to each other in the halls uh, on Mr. a second Chairman, floor. Mr. Chairman, a so point of order, please. We've got a lot uh, of work to do. Point of order. Okay. Uh, we've already taken yeah. action. And, um, I what think I'd you like need to add that to your uh, agenda. Uh, yes. What I'd like to do, Mr. Uh, Chairman, is make please. a motion to recess until 1.30. Yeah, okay. We've, uh, we I'd like to make a motion to silence recess over until here and Silence over Support. here. And we're going to recognize the motion. A motion to recess until 1.30. We have a motion to recess until 1.30. For Patty Heft, supported by Nina Danforth. Discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Abstain. Motion carries. Brandon Stevens opposed. One opposed.